All right. We are in the building. All right. Damas y caballeros, muy bien. Uh, venidos a ustedes. So let's see if we can get this thing as big as we need it to. We're going to keep it right here. All right. So let's get started here and make sure you know what we're doing today. We're talking about thinking fast and speaking now. That is the uh, motivation for today. That is our purpose. And so let's take a look at what we have going on right here. Vamos a empezar clase con un calentamiento. If you don't know what that word means, use the pictures to help you figure it out. We're talking about warming it up, warming it up, right? So we're bringing in today's warm up with a review of the message or the information that we covered in our last class on martes. All right. So if you were with us there, you know what's going down. Estamos hablando del verbo hablar. We're talking about the verb hablar. And if you remember, or if you're just joining us for the first time, soy Profe Don Omar. This is Habla Conmigo TV. And we talked about in our last class, hablar. All right, the verb to speak. And so we, we know that we use an acronym to help us create in the language. And our creativity aspect here is using the acronym ICE, right? ICE, I-C-E. And so we said we want to make sure we can identify, identify our subject. That's our I, right? Identify your subject. Who is the person doing the action in the sentence, right? And then our next thing was the C, which is conjugate your verb. We've got to make that verb agree with your subject or the person doing the action. And then lastly, we want to E, end the sentence, right? You want to put some picante on the end of it, right? You want to put some spice on it or fluff, whatever floats your boat, but we want to make sure that you give us the uh, closing information that we need in your sentence. So right here we have, I talk with you. These are words that we covered. All right. In last class, I talk with you. And then we have, she speaks with me. And then the last part is, or the last one, numero tres, we have, we talk with them. All right. We talk with them. So those are the items there. And I am going to go ahead and move through this quickly because we don't want to be here all day. So what we have here with I talk with you, if you have an answer, go ahead and put that in. Remember, we wanted you to come ready to participate. Learning is not a spectator sport, right? So we want you to jump in and give your answer. A great answer is any answer that you put in here. If you don't put an answer, then that simply tells me that you need additional uh, review. And I would also make sure that you check out that first live that we did on Tuesday. Uh, it is available for you to check out. So definitely look at that so that you can kind of bring yourself up to speed with what we are talking about. So I talk with you. We want to start off with identifying who our subject is, right? So our subject here, the person doing the action is I, right? So we know that our word, la palabra, or el pronombre personal, or el pronombre sujeto, is I, in Espanol, is going to be yo. Right. There we go. You're close enough, Bruce Rain. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, that is good enough. That's going to get you halfway. So if we go back to the live, we know that habla, you are in the correct format. But remember that when we are talking about I, the person, you are first person here and you are doing the action, we've got to get the correct ending for our verb hablar. And remember our steps for identifying or learning how to conjugate a verb, right? We've got three steps. The first one is identify, is it an AR verb, ER verb, or IR verb? Well, if you go back to our last slide, we identified only AR verbs. So we know that hablar, it ends in AR, is an AR verb. Step two, we have to drop that ending, the AR, right? So we're now left with the stem, which is H-A-B-L, okay? And then we talked about what are our endings according to who is doing the action in the yo form in la forma de yo we had yo hablo right and then of course we had our e which was in the sentence 
and we said we were ending with with you. That is our phrase. So yo hablo contigo. All right. Yo hablo contigo. That would be your answer right there. Yo hablo contigo. Okay. So now let's take a look at the next one here. La próxima oración, número dos. She speaks with me. So if we remember that our action, I mean, our subject here, uh, the subject, the doer of the sentence here or the action is she, right? She is doing the action. So we would say ella, right? Ella. And then we need the correct ending on our stem. Remember, we take off step one, take off the AR. Okay, and then we're going to um, add our correct ending, which would be a right. So H L B H A B L A, habla, and then it says with me. And we know that ending our sentence here with with me was one word by itself. And here is our answer. Aquí tenemos la respuesta. Ella habla conmigo. Right? She speaks with me, or she talks with me. All right. Y número tres, we talk with them. So we know that our our doer of the sentence or the statement is we. That is the subject. So remember we had nosotros or nosotras to say we. Nosotros, nosotras. All right? Nosotros, nosotras. Uh bonjour or I that's all I got for you Julian. I don't know uh French. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna sit here and, and act like I do, but uh bonjour mon frère. I, I don't need monsieur, but mon, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so thanks for Julian for joining us here. Uh this is only the second one, Julian. So I haven't been doing this uh, a long time here. So thanks for joining us here. So we've got nosotros close enough, Bruce Rain. You are in the building with an answer. Now remember, hablo only goes with yo, it travels together with that. Those are the only two that go together. All right. So what we want to do is we want to remove that O and just stay with our stem. All right. So we've got nosotros. OK. And then we've got our stem. Well, the ending for the so the subject of nosotros is different because um, in English, we don't have these endings for verbs, which makes it super confusing when somebody is trying to learn English. It's like the same word three or five different times, depending on your subject. In Spanish, we can identify our subject just by the ending of the verb for 90% of the time. So our ending for uh, uh, hablar in la forma de nosotros is hablamos, A-M-O-S. And then our last part, it says with them. Well, we know that our word with is con, all right? And then our word for them, is the same word that we use for they, all right? It's la misma palabra. So they, which we talked about, was ellos or ellas. And we're going to put that in here with the ampersand or the at sign so that you can see what I came up with. Now let that marinate for a second. Take a look at it. Nosotros hablamos con ellos or con ellas. Remember that at sign, the A can be a the at sign or the ampersand can be an A or an O, depending on who you're talking about. We don't know who them actually is, okay? We don't know who them actually is. Now that we're getting into this, this info, let me make this screen bigger because I don't want the people that have vision problems like myself. Uh, I don't know if you're looking on a cell phone or you're on a laptop or on TV, but I definitely want to make sure that you can see this. All right, so we talk with them, and we don't know if them is a group of ladies or a group of men and ladies or just a group of men. So that is why we have ellos or ellas written the way that you see it in the chat. Now, biggest thing is this. When we are out here in these uh, Spanish streets, if you will, you want to definitely identify nosotros hablamos con ellos or nosotros hablamos con ellas. All right, you definitely want to make that distinction. Okay, so we've got a warm up in here. You've got your, your mouth ready uh, with your muscle memory here from last class. So let's get into some stuff right here. Let's get into it. La palabra vieja, the old word, right? The old word. And what I mean by the old word that we talked about, which was to speak or to talk, right? Which is hablar en español. All right. So make sure you got that down, jot that down if you did not get it from the last class. We have it available for you today. I want you to keep a memory or a actual log of a log of your words of the day. 
all right, and kind of study these and make sure you know what they mean. Um, if I were you, I would set up your paper when you uh, or your doc, if you're doing a live doc on Google or whatever, when you set it up, make it two columns. OK, if you're doing it on paper, old school style is very, very easy to do this. What I would do is I would take a simple sheet of paper. OK, and then we fold it uh, hamburger style. I mean, hot dog style here. Boom. Like so. Like like this, like that. OK. And and then when you open it up. OK, now we have two sides of the paper. What I want you to do, the reason why I set it up like this, and I'm going to show you a little manipulative that you can utilize wherever you go you can do this in an index card um or anything uh hey yeah there you go <laughs> there you go julie you are correct i do so now we've got this set up in two columns i want you to put on that paper that you are utilizing if you're doing this old school you're gonna put the words of the day on one side okay in as in espanol or in english i would prefer you to put the english on this side to speak or to talk on the other side, you're going to put right across on the same line the word hablar, okay? And now why do we do this? So when you go to study, okay, and study these words, you fold the paper up hot dog style here, and you say it out loud, uh, to speak, to talk, hablar, right? And then you check or verify by opening up the paper and look directly across. And that's going to give you the opportunity to check yourself before you wreck yourself. If you know what I'm talking about, that's Flashback Fridays. Uh, if anybody knows the name of that song uh, or when it that, that the group that had that in their song, go ahead and type that in the chat if you remember since we're on Flashback Fridays. But as we continue to get this list going and you get more and more words, you just keep adding them. And go through them daily, all right? Go through them daily. If you only have five words in there or three words, and you can add your own words. You don't have to wait on me, right? Add your own words. Do the same thing there. And then just go through those 10 minutes a day, okay? And if you've got time, like multiple times during the day, four or five times. There we go. Okay. You better check your – my man. There you go. That, that was one of my – skip, 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 skip. Yeah, whatever they used to say. All right, let's jump into La Palabra de Hoy. La Palabra de Hoy. All right, the word for today, go ahead and add this to uh, your list, to swim, all right, to swim. These are random words. I don't think there's like, you know, a correlation here, the, the way I pull these out. We're still focusing on verbs that end in A-R, okay? I will leave that little nugget for you because it's going to come back to, to us again at the very end here. So make sure you stick around for the practice so that you can get this free work. All right, to swim in Espanol, nadar, nadar. Okay, nadar. Nadar to swim. It is an AR verb. Remember, we're identifying. There we go, team passport. Thanks for being in the building there, brother or sister. I don't know. You you let me know. Uh, but we are glad you are here. So nadar, we're identifying these three steps to conjugate in a verb, right? Three steps. First step is identify. Is it an AR, ER, IR verb? For us, we haven't talked about ER, IR, so we know, we can see. Oh, this is an AR verb. Boom. What's the second step? Drop the AR. You're left with the stem, N-A-D. I don't know if you realize this, but if you're an English speaker, and perhaps Julian can help us out with the word in French, but to swim is oftentimes related to a lot of things that we see in English, like a natatorium. If you know that word, that's like, you know, up here. Natatorium, though, that's where you swim, right? That's where they do the swimming events, nadar comes from that root of nadar or the N-A-T. Also think about nautical, you know, and nautical deals oftentimes with water. So those are some correlations that you can utilize a lot with Spanish to English. All right, let's keep it moving, damas y caballeros. What are we talking about today? We have describing people, places, and things, all right? So if you go back to grammar school or middle school, you know when we're talking about describing people, places, and things, we know that people, and places, and things are nouns, right? And when we describe or modify those nouns, we're talking about the utilization of adjectives or los adjetivos, all right? So remember our concept. We are icing everything, right? Identify your subject. We're conjugating our verb, and then we're ending the sentence. This is going to kind of help us to get towards the end of a sentence by just putting in additional words to build that sentence structure. 
Okay. The biggest thing is you want to have sentence structure. So I don't want you studying just your list of verbs because you can go out here to any of the bookstores or even Amazon and buy a book that says 501 verbs. Pointless if you don't know how to create a sentence. Our focus is on trying to help you learn how to create sentences as quickly and as effective as possible and not having to think about, oh man, you know, uh, which word I use? We don't want that to be the issue. I'm going to give you the starter blocks that are going to help you get this foundation built so that you can start building this mansion, i.e. your Spanish uh, vocabulary and skill set. Okay, so the first thing that I want you to walk away with today, the nugget here is everything must agree. All right, everything must agree. I want you to type that in uh, your document that if you're keeping a document here, I want you to write this down. Everything must agree. Go ahead and talk to your neighbor. Look to your left, your right. You know, if you have somebody with you here or if you're by yourself, say it out loud. We want that thing to stick at least three times. Right. Everything must agree. What am I talking about, profe? What are you what are you over here say, telling us about everything must agree? Let's take a look here. What does that mean? Right. In Spanish, we have to take into account four key things. What are those four things, four things that we need to know? First, I want you to identify, is your subject singular, right? Or is it plural? Who are we talking about? Identify your subject, right? That's the first thing that we've always said in our acronym of ICE, identify your subject. Is it singular or plural? All right. And then we're going to talk about, that's what we're saying, the number. How many people are you talking about doing the action? Okay. That's what we want to see. Then, for example, aquí tenemos personas, lugares, cosas. Say that out loud if you're working with this for the first time. Personas, right? I guarantee you, you can look at that word and identify what it means, okay? Lugares or lugar, which is place or places, okay? And then cosa or cosas, being things, okay? Or being thing. We want you to make sure you know what that means. All right, aquí tenemos un ejemplo. All right, here we have an example, el estudiante. Notice I do color coding for a reason, all right? And we'll bring that up in the end here, el estudiante. I want you to ask yourself or answer this question to yourself. No need to type it in the chat. El estudiante, the student. If you know your rules of plurality versus singularity, you know that el estudiante it does not end in an S so that you know probably, hey man, this might be singular. And you are correct versus la forma plural. Los estudiantes. Check out the color code right there. All right, let's take a look at a, a place here. Aquí tenemos la tienda. All right, singular versus las tiendas, which would be stores. And I'm pretty sure if you can't look at this word, I hope you can look at this word and kind of see what this means. If we're talking about a person and it means estudiante, uh, hopefully you know that this is student. All right, you can kind of look at that. This is what we call a cognate. All right, it kind of looks like what you see in English, and chances are it's going to be the same word in Espanol, all right? La tienda store versus stores. Let's look at a thing here. El perro, all right? All right, el perro versus los perros, all right? Singular versus plural. We're talking about dog versus dogs, okay? All right, so now let's keep it moving here. So the first thing, the second thing, all right, the second thing that we have here is gender. All right. So in English, we don't really deal with gender. However, in Frances and a host of other romance languages that we have, we do deal with gender. OK, like I said, I don't speak French. Julian's in here for a reason. He helps me out uh, kind of sort of with French if I really ask questions. But our gender. All right. Is important. And the color code purpose, everything that we saw on that previous slide, you notice I had blue and pink. Right. And I want you to start thinking uh in the concept of masculine versus feminine okay masculino versus feminina all right or depende estamos hablando de una palabra masculina versus feminina and we're going to talk about the reason why we changed that but more importantly i want you to look at this now a lot of times people will tell you oh if it ends in o it's masculine or if it ends in a it's it's feminine that is not technically the foolproof foolproof answer that you want to go with or the justification for identifying gender in espanol the way that you want to identify gender is by that article that comes in front of the word here we have the definite articles el and la 
el and la, okay? So el being the, okay, la also means the. But our our objects or our subjects here, for that matter, happen to be estadio, okay? And then casa. These are our, our subjects of our sentences. And we know by the article that this is masculine, okay? This is feminine, okay? Now, we're going to put this all together. Let's take a look here. Aquí tenemos práctica. We got the word or the phrase, the tall boy. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. You know, everybody everybody didn't get, you might have missed that day in class. Don't even worry about it. All right, the tall boy. Okay, the tall boy. Now, I'm going to give you these words. I don't expect you to know this stuff. We got the word or the phrase, the tall boy. So, step by step, we want to identify what the subject is in Espanol. El muchacho o la muchacha. We have many words for boy and girl in Espanol. I'm just going to give you this one right now. Okay, remember that I put the at sign or the ampersand, ampersand here at the end, signifying that if it's a boy, el muchacho, right? And if it's a girl, la muchacha, okay? Now, here comes the, 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 the flip right here. We've got our word for tall, alto or alta, okay? We've got to remember that phrase, that mantra that I gave you at the very beginning, everything must agree. What do we mean? If I'm talking about a boy, it's got to end in O for muchacho. And if that's the case for muchacho, this word, our adjective, tall, also has to agree with muchacho. You've got the option, alto or alta. Okay. So what would we come up with? El muchacho alto. El muchacho alto. Okay. El muchacho alto. The tall boy. Now you might be looking at it and say, wait a minute. This is not written the same way that you see it in English. Yes, that is correct. I'm going to give you another little nugget that you need to jot down. It is super important. In Espanol, all right, in Espanol, we put people are more important than things that describe them. All right, people are more important than the words that describe them. What do I mean by that? People are more important than the words that describe them. Make sure you jot that down. It's going to be something that you take with you. What I mean by that is this. Our person, our subject is the boy, right? We want to most, for, first and foremost, make sure we identify our subject because we talked about that. Now, everything that comes after that is going to be something that describes that boy. And so here we have directly an adjective that's going to go right after our word boy to describe him or modify him, el muchacho alto, right? So we have to get out of the mindset of, you know, making things the same way they are in English. This is a what we call in America or in the United States, a foreign language. Right. We can't follow the same rules. They have different rules. And so this rule is probably the second most important thing after making sure that we know everything must agree. All right. Let's go to some more practice here. I keep the name of the old church now i'm gonna pause for the cause a little bit after i give you these words and i want to see if you can formulate the phrase on your own and then give us your answer in the chat aquí tenemos la iglesia all right la iglesia for church we're going to add in our adjective nuestro adjetivo all right viejo or vieja all right viejo or vieja now if you're listening to me you're saying wait a minute why are you sounding like you're saying a b versus a V. All right, depends on where you are, okay? Most people are going to pronounce this as a soft B sound, okay? Viejo. You can maybe make, make out, maybe, uh, is that a V or a B? Doesn't really matter. That's not the important part, okay? The important part is putting this phrase together. So if you've got it and you're in the chat and you're joining us in here, we'd like to do the roll call. Let me know you're in the building. i like to shout out to everybody that shows up so I can keep my mental attendance. So if you are in the building, just hit us with a one or hola, buenas tardes, if you are sitting out there listening to what we are putting together here. But those people that have already been here, I need that phrase, the old church, better on Espanol. What are we going to say? Que vamos a decir? What are we going to say here? The old church. All right, put it together and put it in chat for us. And let's see what you come up with, okay? Let's see what you come up with. Hey, Los, appreciate you, brother. Thank you for joining us today. Um, oh, hey, man, you be sitting on the top of the roof, man. Like, <laughs> like my man, I don't know if y'all saw Belly, but uh, when, when Method Man was, you know, was sitting in Nas's uh, 
crib when he came in or t boz yeah t boz there we go ah my man bruce rain in the building with the correct answer la iglesia vieja excelente senor let's move all right let's move all right vamos a continue we're going to continue here the tall boys uh-oh uh-oh the tall boys okay you already know your word for boy right well, the good thing is this 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 rule of plurality actually coincides with English. OK, so boy, el muchacho. But watch what we do here. Los. And then we've got to make it plural. And it's the same rule that we follow in English. Right. We just add an S to it. All right. If it ends in O or ends in A, you just add an S. OK, if it's an O or if it ends in O or A, you just add an S. All right. Las muchachas los muchachos all right now remember we said at the beginning our number one mantra is everything must agree right so if my subject is going to be plural right if my subject is plural los muchachos doesn't that mean that my adjective to describe those boys also has to be plural I'm not going to give the answer away. I want you to put it in the chat, right? Learning is not a spectator sport. Make sure you drop your answer in the chat if you can figure this out for us. So we want to say, there we go, Bruce Rain. Uh, you forgot the H, but yes, I understand what you're saying. Los muchachos altos. Excelente. You are learning something today. Air high five to you, brother. All right. Los muchachos altos. Okay. The tall boys. Let's keep it moving here. All right. So we've got the tall girls. Okay. The tall girls. I'll give you the info. I'm just going to wait on the answer. All right. Uh, mi hermano Sean, bienvenido, señor. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Sean, I know you jumped in here late. You know, you're sitting in the back row like the Baptist person in church. Uh, give me your answer here. Oh, yeah, that, that spell check is real when we're doing a different language. You are correct. Uh, Sean, if you were in the building, the tall girls, we need that phrase ASAP, sir. ASAP. Can you give that to us? The tall girls. All right. The tall girls. Meanwhile, uh, I don't know, Sean might type, he might be one of the people that hit the hit the keyboard like this. So uh Sean, if that's you, hey man, type it out. We'll get it when you when you send it. All right. Otherwise, if you anybody else has the answer right here in the chat, go ahead and drop that in there for us. The tall girls. All right. I don't want to give the answer away. I know the answer. I want to see if you know the answer, right? Because when we take an active role in this learning thing, it's gonna stick. I promise you. All right. It's going to stick. Make sure everything must agree. Everything must agree. Everything must agree, Sean. Make everything agree. So, Sean, what would we need to do if everything across the board from left to right? I see las. I see chicas. And then you got your word alta. OK, I need everything to agree. Uh Oh, Bruce has been here since the bell rang, Sean. He's been here. He was on the front row. All right. Yes, that is correct. Gracias, Senor Bruce Rain. Las muchachas altas. Las muchachas altas. All right, let's see. We're going to put it into, okay, so we're going back to church again, right? <laughs> like that phrase. Going back to church. We've got the old churches. I'm just going to give you the, the roots of everything that you need here. Las iglesias and then viejo o vieja. All right, here we go. Put that shot back up there on the, on the rim there, Sean. Let's see if it'll roll around and, and drop. What do you got for me right here? Las iglesias vieja. What would we come up here with right now? Las Iglesias Vieja. All right, I'm going I'm to I'm let Sean put it together for me. All right. Yeah, no, nah, I don't do homework. Yeah, I don't do that. I hate homework. I've never believed in it personally, uh, just because I didn't like to do it in school. Uh, I feel like when you're in class, if, you, if you're putting in that work and you're putting in that effort, you don't need homework. All right. Um, so the old churches. All right. And, you know, like I said, we're waiting on Sean. He might not have his glasses on this morning over there in the central standard time. So uh, if he is uh, searching for his glasses, we might need somebody that already has their glasses on um, or has perfect vision there to give us their answer. Las Iglesias Vieja. If we don't have it, I will definitely type it in so we can keep this ball rolling. All right. I'm going to type it in here. Las Iglesias. Ah. Come on, Sean. Come on. What am I missing, Sean, out of your answer is what I what I want to know. All right. Las Iglesias. What am I missing right there? I'm missing something. Show me what I'm missing, Sean. Las Iglesias. 
There we go. Thank you. Thank you, A. We got to help our people. Help our help our, our, our fellow alumnos, estudiantes here. Help the fellow yeah, people out there. Sean, I know, I know you, you see what we're talking about, right? We want everything to agree. I want you to make sure you put that into your mental Rolodex or your Spanish toolbox, mental toolbox here. Everything must agree. I see we got we got we got uh Ed Coda and uh oh Vince Carter out here, the alley you. There we go. Um Las Iglesias Viejas. And that's why I'm color coding things, ladies and gentlemen, Thomas Caballeros, so that you can know I want everything to agree when we go left to right. Okay. Oh, yeah. I man, hey, I'm telling you, I know, I know what it is. All right. Let's give you one more here. I don't think we have any more after this. We're going to jump into something else, but we want to make sure that you have this rule down. I'm not going to tell you anything from this one. I'm just going to show you what you see on the screen. Anybody type in your answer here. Uh, the white paper. Okay. The white paper. Okay. The white paper. All right. The white paper. Oh yeah. I know. We know. We already know, Sean. We know you, uh, you, you moved to, to a different beat. Yeah. You, you, uh, team Edward. Uh, <laughs> so the white paper, the white paper, El Papel Blanco. Excelente, senor. Excellent. All right. I think you I think you might have it there. Uh you might have that one there. We're gonna give you a little bonus question here, Bruce Rain. Um, we want you to go with the white napkins. There's your word for white over here, blanco or blanca. And I want you to see if you can put that together. That's a little bonus one for you. The white napkins. Okay, because I know you know that word napkins. Now don't worry about the spelling. OK, not, you know, to speak a language is not knowing how to spell things. I'm not I'm not worried about that. I just want to make sure you can make it agree. OK, El papel blanco. All right. We do have some more practice. Well, you know, some of us might need this practice. Let's look at something. All right. This is what we this is why we have more practice. I want you to take a look at El Blanco. You, you didn't follow your rule. Remember, the person or the thing first and then how we describe it. All right. The person or the thing first. So what is your subject? Your subject is the servilleta, right? The servilleta, all right? So it would be, and it's servilleta. I'm going to give you the word so that you can see it there. La servilleta, okay? Now put that together while you're working on that one. We're going to keep it moving here. The big books. Uh, somebody put this together for us while uh, Bruce Rain is doing his, his bonus assignment. The big books, El Libro blank. Grande. Now we're looking at that word grande, and you might be like, "Hey, profe, wait a minute! It doesn't end in or a." That is the great thing about this one. It's universal. It's uni. It's unisex. It does not have gender. All right. It is. It, there's no gender in words that end in e. All right. Adjectives that end in e. So what do you do? I can use it with a masculine noun or a feminine noun. Okay. So, aquí tenemos el libro, es masculino, right? El libro es masculino, all right? What if I had something like la revista, the magazine? Well, it's feminine. If this is still the adjective that I have to use, then it does not change over. We do not change from grande to grando or granda. You leave it the way it is, all right? The only thing that you need to worry about is it es singular o plural, all right? Estamos hablando del libro es singular. All right. El libro es singular. Por eso necesitamos un adjetivo que es singular. Right. We need if our noun or our subject is singular, we just need to make sure that our adjective is singular. If it's plural, then we just added S to our adjective. So let's take a look here. El libro grande. Uh, I don't see I don't think I see anybody in the chat with the answer here. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on the uh, you change the gender on it, uh, Bruce. See what I wrote? Look what I wrote above you and leave it, leave it the way that I, I gave it to you because a servilleta is feminine, okay? the Don't think about it being, oh, is it a woman or it has nothing to do. The gender of the word, la servilleta, that's how it is. You don't change it over because you're a guy, all right? And a woman wouldn't change it over to, uh, you know, Leave it well, we'd leave it in the feminine format, which is la servilleta. Okay, so you don't have to change it over because you're a guy. Okay, whoa, 
that that hey man that autocorrect is getting to you <laughs> but you got i know what you're trying to say yes that is uh that is uh, that is the correct answer uh, look okay so we were making this one plural i'm sorry we were making this one plural because we had the big books so yes los libros grandes all right Tap one in the chat, ladies and gentlemen, if you understand how we came up with this one, all right? Remember, this is just the root, right? This, these are the roots of these words that we're talking about. But our initial act, uh, activity was the big books, all right? The big books. Hola, señor. All right, bienvenido. Uh, the big books. It's plural. How do we know it's plural? Well, we look at that S, right? Entonces, aquí tenemos los libros grandes, all right? The books big. Remember, you take your person. Oh, sorry. You take your person or your item and put that first. Always. All right. Always put that first. And then how you want to describe it in Espanol, in Portuguese. If Julian's still in here, my my uh, colleague from from France, if he's in or in France, if he's still in here, uh, he would tell you, I think more than likely they follow the same rule. We always put our person or thing that's important first and then how we want to describe it afterwards. OK. All right. So we've got mas practica. We're coming up on the tail end here. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to be here for a long time. Right. We're just here for a good time. And we're going to do some more practice. Mas practica. What with what we were doing from our first class. OK. We're going to do some more practice. So we're taking our nuestra palabra de hoy, which is to swim. Somebody type in in Espanol. What is our word of the day in Espanol? All right. Que es la palabra de hoy en Espanol para to swim? Okay. Somebody type that in the chat. If you remember, if you were here with us from the beginning, to swim in Espanol. Como se dice to swim in Espanol? All right, I'll be looking in the chat for somebody to type that in there. All right, I'll give you a hint. I believe it's only like uh, five letters. Okay, five letters. There we go. Appreciate you, uh, Los. All right, Los coming out of left field with it. Nadar, right? There we go. All right, Nadar. All right, so remember, now we want to make sure to follow our rules, right? We had three rules to conjugate this verb right identify is it a r e r i r all right now that is an a r verb right our next rule drop the a r right we've got to drop the ending we want to be left with the stem our stem is going to be in a d right that is your stem not okay then we have to make it agree there we go los always great great mental work right there all right the a third thing that we want to make sure is that we make it agree con nuestro sujeto, with our subject. Who is doing the action, right? That's what you got to remember. Those are your three rules from last class. So let's see what we got today. All right, we got a little, uh, this is our E in ICE, right? Remember I gave you the acronym on last class, identify your subject, conjugate your verb in your sentence, right? We are on our in the sentence aspect, in la piscina. I want you to write these phrases down because you can utilize these to um, finish your sentences here, okay? We, we're talking about the picante aspect. We got to season our meat, if you will, all right? Season the, 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 the dish that you have right here, okay? And this is how we're going to season it by, this is the last step that we need. And yes, there we go, excelente, in the pool, excelente. Now, there's another word for pool, okay? If you are somebody that may, you know, frequent Mexico, they do use a different word there. Do they know piscina? Absolutely. They would know what you're talking about. Do they use it? Not so often, but they will know because we're talking about Castellano. Ah, Castellano. And so Spanish is also known as Castellano. Okay. And I'll type that in the chat and you can Google it and find out why we call it that. Castellano. All right. Because that's like the, that's the root. It's Castilian Spanish is basically. So Google the roots on that. Um, but here we have in la piscina, in el mar, all right, in el mar, el mar Caribe, right, in el mar, in the sea, all right, in el lago, in the lake, all right, in el lago, in el oceano, in el oceano, 
Okay, and you can look at that. That's what we would call a cognate, right? A cognate. If it looks like the word in English, it is the word in Spanish. That's a cognate, all right? So in el oceano. Uh, river, great one. I don't have that one on here. Uh, let's put that one in. I'm going to put it in the chat. Uh, this No, this is a good one. And it's got an accent on the I in Rio. Think about Rio Grande, right? Now you know what that means. Rio Grande, we know what the word grande means because we did some activity with it earlier. El Rio Grande, what does it mean in English? El Rio Grande, right? Let that blow your mind a little bit. All right, so let's see what else we got here. Examples, los ejemplos. Yo, subject, right? Sujeto. Yo, or el ex executor, or el ejecutor de, de la acción. The, the person that, yeah, there you go, Bruce. You got it now. You're picking up what I'm putting down. So the person executing the action, el ejecutor, or el sujeto de la oración, right? Yo. Nado. In el mar. All right. I want you to start thinking about the language in this format. You know, there are some some places that people have some supplemental apps that you, oh man, let me study these words. But if you study the language in phrases, you will get to your end goal of speaking the language by studying it in phrases. Okay. You just take a couple of these rules with you. And then you will be able to quite uh, to understand this a lot easier. Before I go to the let, let's go to the next example, Maria. I'm using the same people from last week. I mean, from last class, Maria. All right, there we go. Good stuff. Appreciate you, Maria. Nada in. All right, so Maria nada in la piscina. All right, Maria nada in la piscina. All right, so. If we're looking at this, we've got Maria, nuestro sujeto. She's our subject, okay? We know that our stem is nada, right? This is your stem, N-A-D. We added our ending because the third person. There we go. So Maria nada en la piscina. She swims, or Maria swims, in the pool. There we go, Sean. Appreciate it. All right. Maria y yo. Maria y yo nadamos. All right. Maria y yo nadamos con ustedes. All right. Somebody tell me what I'm saying right there. Maria y yo nadamos con ustedes. If you're picking up what I put down in last class, you should know that ustedes. What does that mean? Ustedes. Maria y yo nadamos con ustedes. Okay. Maria y yo. Nadamos con ustedes. All right. And we'll look for somebody to give us the answer in the next couple of seconds here. Hopefully you can figure that one out. If you've got a question, just hit me in the, in the chat with a question mark. All right. Maria and I. Eh, close, 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 close. Okay. You're, yes, we are. We are in the neighborhood. So think about that, Sean. Think about that last word, ustedes. It ends in es, right? There's your clue. So would it be you? There, ah, uh, we're getting there. Everybody's in the. Hey, I'm telling y'all what. Everybody's in the same neighborhood. Y'all all at different houses. I need everybody to be at the same house. And it's a technicality based on Ascended Scion three, based on what he said. He's close. He's probably next door. But I need y'all knocking at the right house here. Maria y yo nadamos con ustedes. Okay. Maria y yo con ustedes. Ustedes. If you know what usted means, like Sean said, you. Like, I got neighbors. Y'all at the neighbor's house on the left and the right. I need y'all at my house in the middle. Okay. Sean's there. Ascended Scion is there. You are there. But I, I need y'all at the middle house. So what's the what's the middle um option between what both of you all are saying okay maria y yo nadamos con ustedes usted means you but we've got that es on the end of it maria and i are swimming with you all there we go well los is like the uh the rizza out here he's out of nowhere he, yeah man here it is uh excelente senor excelente all right so let's use the same sentences 
right? I think these can work. We can use the same sentences with our new word, la nueva palabra de hoy, nadar, all right? There you go, with y'all, Sean, with y'all. Yeah, there we go, I send this out, Yana. yeah, with y'all or you all. So Marie and I are swimming with y'all or you all, okay? Because usted, Sean, remember, usted means you, right? If I'm talking to an older person, right? Como esta usted, right? Um, como se llama usted, right? That's what you would, there you go, you with me. All right, so now we're going to utilize our same three sentences. The setup is the same, okay? It does not matter, well, it will if it doesn't make sense, but in this scenario, we can utilize it. Uh, yeah, you, you know what it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all. <laughs> you all. Like Jackie Chan. What movie? What movie? A uh, little, little, little trivia right there. You all. No, it ain't you all. It's y'all. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, so let's use these three sentences. Uh, las mismas frases. All right. And we're just going to put in a, uh, it might have been one. It might have been one. When they were out there on the, on the car, when they were leaning on the car, getting the, uh, he was talking about war. Who? Yeah, you all. <laughs> Anyways, back back to these three citizens. I want you to use nadar. Vamos a usar el verbo nadar. And then also give us our words from last class. All we're doing is building this foundation. All right. Build this foundation to your house. We need a crawl space, no slabs, right? No slabs. We don't want no slabs. Little, little, uh, we want we want a solid crawl space foundation, a strong one, right? We want some rebar. We want all that. We're putting it together. So let's get some answers right here. I don't care which one you do. Pick one and, and check it in the chat here. If you got a question, always hit me with a question mark and then or hit me with your question directly. And I will try to assist you. Uh, like I said, we're baby stepping this thing. You know, there's no need to jump off into the deep end if you can't swim, right? I want to make sure that we get the basics down before we start jumping into some big things. All right. So, tu blank con blank. All right. I wish I could. Okay. There's the answers. Thank you. It's in this ion three. All right. Uh, so, we've got tu nadas. All right. Con. Now, it's in this ion three. We need that. That preposition, how would we say, or the subject here? Um, oh, uh, the root word nadar, N A D A R. Ah, uh, tu nada, okay, gracias, señorita. Tu nadas con nosotros, right? Because we don't know, it could be nosotras, right? No, we don't know if it's if the us signalizes a group, and you always do just like you all just did, you always work with the masculine gender first because we don't know and it could include a, a mixed group so yes do nadas con nosotros all right uh what's the root word the root word is nadar n-a-d-a-r just want to make sure you know that and remember your endings right for ar verbs if you don't i'm gonna put a link in the description here so that you can go back and check that live out um and I, i've got some other videos that also work with the conjugation as well so we'll make sure we tag those to this live all right, let's go to the next one. If anybody has it, there we go, Sean. Woo! Sean must have got up out the bed. Woke up out the bed. All right, here we go, Sean. Sean's got ellos nada conmigo. I'm missing something, Sean. You next door. You're not at the middle house. Remember, there's one thing that you've got to add to nada. There's because we're talking about ellos, plural, right? Ellos, and it's not an S. All right, it's not an S. We can't put that on there because that would give us what we saw in la primera frase, tú nadas con nosotros, all right? And we put an S on that one. The AS is the two-form ending, right? La forma de tú. Excelente, Sean. Where did he get that rebound and put it back, all right? So ellos nadan con, and then we've had me in preposition, so ellos nadan conmigo, right? They swim with me. All right, let's, let's, let's go ahead and send it, bring it home here. Bring it home, Cap. So we've got usted, blank, con, and then we've got her, all right? And then, Sion, if you, everybody looks, Sion gave us the answer for the last one. If you scroll up in the chat here, the answer is there. He's got it in his, his last statement. We just need to put the sentence together. And as you are typing this, say it out loud if you can, if you have the opportunity to do so. Hey, man, I hear you. I think you sometimes can, on some of those things, you can, like, decrease the sensitivity. Uh, so that it kind of picks up faster what you're typing in. 
I know you can do that on like Androids. I don't, you know, all these other stuff. I don't necessarily know. Usted blank con blank. Somebody give me the whole phrase here. And if you uh <laughs> say, yeah, it must be a Commodore. Uh, uh, <laughs> who knows? Uh, so usted blank con blah, blah, blah. Say in. Say in. Say in. Oh, lo siento. Okay. Say in. Gracias. That works for me. You know, hey, you know what I deal with. There's only a couple of languages I got in my, my uh, toolbox. Usted nadamos con ella. Ah, no, nadamos is going to be your nosotros. Oh, that's that old school, old granddaddy move right there. I'm just going, uh, gracias, señorita. Um, so C7, the, the nadamos is for nosotros. All right, nadamos is for nosotros. All right, and like what I'm going to do right now, and I want you to take a look in the chat. I'm going to type this in the chat um, so that you can see for los verbos, los verbos. Um, I'm going to type it in the chat for you. All right. And then I'm just going to kind of do this one by one. Here you go. Goes with O, the ending O. Okay. Tu. Tu. There's an accent on the U. I can't get it on here. Would be. Us. This is kind of just a good review for us finishing up here today. The el or ella o usted. The ending for your verb would be a. Okay. The nosotros or nosotras would be amos or we, right? Um, and then ellos, ellas, ustedes. La terminación is an. Okay. So there you have all of your endings for AR and IR verbs. So yo, I would be the O, right? Tu, as is your ending. Right, right. Now we're seeing and Now you're picking up what I'm putting down here. The L, ella, usted, the ending for your verb. A, nosotros, we, amos, ellos, ellas, ustedes, an. Take off your first step. Uh, C7, the HOA homesteader, make sure you always remove the, the first step is identify as it an AR, ER, IR verb. All right. We know it's an AR verb. Second step, drop your AR. You want to be left with the stem. All right. It's kind of like if you visualize the fact that you're taking a, a flower out of, out of the earth, right? It's got the roots hanging from the flower. Take the roots off so that you're left with just the stem and the petals on the flower. Think of it in that concept. And so nadad is your entire flower that's in the earth. As you pull it up, take the roots off because we don't throw the roots in the vase with the uh, flowers, right? They always have that cut off. All right. So you're left with your stem, which is in a D. And then you're going to add these endings for the tiempo presente or the present tense. All right. So make sure you do that going forward. Damas y caballeros, it has been a pleasure here joining you today with lesson two. Make sure you check back with us next week. We're going to do the same bad time, same bad channel. We're going to try to do noon. All right. If anybody else has a, a, a particular time choice, I know we're not out of uh, work on Tuesday, um, but you can always catch me on the back end on the replay. But if you have not, <clears throat> excuse me, if you have not, always been able to get a, to be available for the live just type it in the community uh tab hit me in a comment some section right down here hey can you think about doing a time a class at blah 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 time no they now that senorita bruce rain you know what we do uh make sure you share this out get it out to as many people that you know that are trying to learn spanish we're building that foundation right and so if they are getting in right now you're in a good scenario i'm not going to really focus on your like your greetings and your farewells that you know i've got that stuff you can check out the videos the quick ones on that but we're actually classes in session when we go live we're going to do some real good stuff here de nada igual tu sabes senor all right and i thank you all for joining me today uh lastly soy Profe Don Omar, nos vemos.